just when all hope seemed lost. Love opened the door for us, he said, come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside. And these thieves, there's no one unwelcome here. And that sin and shame that you brought with you, you can leave it at the door. Let mercy draw you near. So come to the table, come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your Beside the Savior, sit down and be set free. Come to the table, come to the table, to the thief and to the doubter, to the hero, to the coward, to the prisoner and the soldier. Hello, it is my joy and honor to welcome you to worship the week of July 26th from wherever and whenever you are joining us. It is my joy and honor to welcome you. A few announcements before we get started. This is our last week of pre-recorded service as on August 2nd, our session is planning on returning to in-person worship. Now, if you plan to join us at 1030 at First Presbyterian Church Beatrice on August 2nd, Social distancing and masks, along with other precautions, will be enforced in order to keep people as safe as possible. If you don't feel comfortable joining us in person, then we will live stream it via our YouTube webpage, and we will also save it to our YouTube page for later viewing. If you haven't seen an email in your email box yet, or you haven't received an a letter in your mailbox yet, wait and it'll be coming shortly this week. Other announcements in this time for the safety and health of my family and myself, uh, I will not be joining on August 2nd to be with my family in the midst of our newborn baby. And so we will have different people preaching and leading worship in that time. Doris, one of our elders, will actually be leading worship, and giving the message on August 2nd. If you'd like to know what else is going on in the life of our church, you can find it in the bulletin that's in the link below this video. Or you can call the church office, and we'll be happy to share that with you or check your email or your mailbox. 
And now as we come before God, this Sunday as we, as we explore how God calls us outside of the divisions that, that we see in our world, let us prepare ourselves to meet God in this space that we're in right now. So I invite you to take a deep breath in. And exhale. Breathe in God's love. Breathe out God's love to others. Breathe in God's love. Breathe out God's love to others. Breathe in God's love. And breathe out God's love to others. And let's pray. Eternal love. When the world fails us, we know you do not. When the world tosses us out of its net, you catch us and call us good and love us and care for us. When the world rejects us, you embrace us. We don't fit in. We sometimes feel we don't belong. And yet, we belong to you. You call us precious. You seek us from the shadowy corners of the world and bring us into your light, your warmth, your love. Remind us of how precious we are, O God, and how much we are needed when the world brings us down. Help us to go and seek others, like hidden treasures in a field, and share your love and light with all people. And Lord, in this time, let your Spirit remind us of these truths as we gather in your presence. In your name we pray. Amen. And let us now join our hearts, minds, and voices together as God's children in our call to worship. We are united as one in the triune God. We gather to pray and act for unity with all of God's children. God leads us to work for and welcome all humanity. We gather in the assurance that we are all welcomed by God. May our world know that we are followers of Jesus by our unrestricted love. And as we come before the God who welcomes us, who breaks down the divisions and pushes us past the divisions of our world, let us sing together, Come As You Are. sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burdens lay down your shame all who are broken lift up your face oh wanderer come Lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless, and all who ask to reign. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, and rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. 
All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your heart, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, fall in his arms, come as you are, there's joy for the morning. O oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. All who are broken. Lift up your face, oh wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. Lay down your hurt, lay down your heart. Come as you are Come as you are Come as you are Let us lay down all that we are before the God who accepts us as we are, with love and grace. Let us pray our prayer of confession. God of hospitality and wonder, you welcome us to a table that invites those who are different than us. This invitation has made us uncomfortable, unsettled, and defensive. Our discomfort comes from an unwillingness to see other people's perspectives. Our unsettledness comes from a dependence on the status quo. Our defensiveness comes from a belief that our image of you is the only one that matters. Help us to surrender ourselves to the abundance of your invitation. Inspire us to embrace the fact that diversity is strength, not weakness. Gather us to welcome the stranger, care for the oppressed, and feed the hungry like Jesus did. Forgive us for our short-sightedness and open us to your gospel that we might better embody the beloved community you call us to be. Hear and accept us as we confess our struggle and brokenness to you. And all men. This is the truth of God's amazing love. That although we are broken, that although we fall short, God still loves us. God still accepts us. God still calls us to the table to be in fellowship with God and with each other. Friends, believe and proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. And as God's children, welcome to the table. Welcome to the lap of Jesus. We spend time with the youngest of God's children. As we spend a focused time with our children. Hello to everybody. Whoa, we're wrapping up July. It's getting close to August and the start of school. Next Sunday, we're going to be meeting in the sanctuary. So, hoping to see all of you then. I have some friends here. I have my egg friends. We've got 
red, brown, yellow, black, and white. And I know my black isn't exactly black, but we're pretending the color didn't turn out quite right. But red, brown, yellow, black, and white. All right, just like the song. Eggs actually come in two different colors. They come in white and they come in brown. Now on the outside they're different. Just like I've made all of my eggs different. I've got one with blue eyes and black eyes, brown eyes, green eyes. Okay, we've got different colored hair. We've got some curly hair, some straight hair. All right? On the outside, we all look different. Okay, but if I take this brown egg and this white egg and I break it, Will the brown one look different than the yellow one? Or, I mean, than the white one? Let's see. No. They both look the same. White eggs and brown eggs are actually the same, have the same nutrition in them. They both are the very same on the inside. Even though on the outside, they look different. God made us all different. Now, Peter, in the Bible... He was thinking that Jesus came to only save the Jews. Woo, we don't want to talk to those Gentiles. We don't want to tell them about Jesus. Okay, but Jesus showed him in a vision that he was to love everybody. It didn't matter if they were brown or they were white. They were black, yellow, or red. On the inside, we are all loved by God because we are all the same even though on the outside we might look different how do you like your eggs scrambled ooh use them to make cookies hmm maybe deviled eggs mix them up and put them in some chicken or some tuna and make some chicken tuna or chicken salad sandwiches eggs have lots of purposes just like we have lots of purposes but we need to let God love us and show us what jobs we have to do for him. Let's sing a song. The world. Red, brown, yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Remember, Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. And we have to remember that we need to love everyone, no matter what they look like on the outside, and let God work through us. Let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, we know that everyone is precious in your sight. And we know that you came to save everyone. Not just those of us that are white, maybe, or black, or brown, or red, or yellow. You came to save each and every one of us. Let our light shine through you so that others will know how much you love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember... The treasure hunt? It's been a couple weeks now. I was actually a little disappointed. We didn't have very many people rise to the challenge. The treasure hunt is still out there, so if you're still interested in treasure hunting, go for it. See if you can find it. You may have to go back and dig out the clues that I sent you. Okay? But go find that treasure. Hope to see you next week. Bye. Now let's hear God's word from the early church. As told in the book of Acts, chapter 10, selected verses. Let's listen for the word God has for us today. About noon the next day, as they were on their journey approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while it was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the heaven opened and something like a large sheet coming down being lowered to the ground by its four corners. In it were all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. Then he heard a voice saying, 
Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is profane or unclean. The voice said to him again, a second time, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times, and the thing was suddenly taken up to heaven. Now while Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make the vision he had seen, suddenly the men sent by Cornelius appeared. They were asking for Simon's house and were standing by the gate. They called out to ask whether Simon, who was called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Look, three men are searching for you. Now get up, go down and go with them without hesitation, for I have sent them. But Peter went down to the men and said, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason you are coming? They answered, Cornelius, a centurion, an upright, an upright and God-fearing man who is well spoken of by the whole Jewish nation, was directed by a holy angel to send for you to come to this house and to hear what you have to say. So Peter invited them in and gave them lodging. The next day he got up and went with them, and some of the believers from Joppa accompanied him. The following day they came to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up saying, Stand up, I am only a mortal. And as he talked with him, he went in and found that many had assembled. And he said to them, You yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius replied, Four days ago, at this very hour, at three o'clock, I was praying in my house, when suddenly a man in dazzling clothes stood before me. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner, by the sea. Therefore I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. So now all of us are here in the presence of God to listen to all that the Lord has commanded you to say. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water of baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is God's word to us, God's people. And so let us say together, thank you, God. And with the magic of recording, I'm wearing different clothes. Actually, no, it's not magic. You're just getting a look into how I record things. Because normally the sermon is one of the last things I record. So I've recorded everything else where I'm wearing the red shirt. Uh, but the sermon is coming a little earlier than usual because... Right now, we are waiting to head to the hospital. And so I am getting this recorded before we head to the hospital in a few moments, a few hours, however long that may be, uh, or whenever Rudy says it's time to go. And so I want to get recorded, though, before, because I think this sermon, I think this message of what God gives us, uh, of moving past the laws of division, the seen and unseen lots of division is actually one that is becoming more enlightened to us and what's going on in the world right now. And I'll be honest, is, is one that I think about a lot as we about to head off to have our, our third child. It's an interesting story. Peter getting this vision from God while he's up on a roof, while he's up on his own. 
this vision of of animals coming down on a blanket and being told to eat. We talked about this story a few weeks ago in our adult Sunday school class on Sunday morning, and someone asked, "So what is so what is the significance? What does it matter what animals are on there?" And according to Jewish scripture in the Old Testament, all the animals that were on that blanket were animals that were not supposed to be eaten, were seen as impure. And yet God tells Peter to not only notice these animals, but to eat them. And when Peter says, hold on now, I've, I've lived the life, I've, I've followed all the rules, I've never let anything impure touch this mouth, I've never let, I've never done anything impure. God says, don't call impure or unclean what I have made clean. And so Peter goes and Peter meets Cornelius, who is a Gentile, who, as Peter says, he's not, Peter as a Jewish person, especially as a Jewish leader, is not supposed to go with this Gentile. He's not supposed to be with him, let alone, let alone interact with him and eat with him and, and spread the word of God to him. But, but Cornelius had a vision from God to have Peter come. And Peter had that vision. And so Peter gets to Cornelius and says, who am I to go against God's word? God has told me not to call profane what God has made unprofane. And so Peter shares the word of God, not only with Cornelius, but with all those gathered. And then Peter says, well, who am I to withhold the waters of baptism from those that God has, those that God has called to us? And it's an interesting story, but it's, it's, it's an even bigger story. And the fact that this is, this is, this is the true moment where we see God telling God's people at that point that it's not just, there isn't that divisive line. There isn't those laws that keep you separated from everyone else. These laws aren't meant just for a few. These laws are what God has given to everyone. And it's not the laws, it's the, it's Jesus, right? It's, Jesus has come from, er, for, for everybody. So these laws that you try to keep divisive, these laws that you try to divide yourself from others, it's now time to overcome them. It's now time to see that, that I came as Jesus Christ for everybody. And I think in this time we see a, a lot of those laws, those written and unwritten codes that, that have divided us. We see them coming to light. We see them coming to light in the Black Lives Matter movement and showing that there have been laws and codes that have said that people who do not have white skin are different and treated differently and deserve to be treated differently than those who don't. And we see it in COVID with you know, how do we how do we care for those outside of ourselves? And how do how is our healthcare system work? I thought about these divisions a lot as we prepare for this for our third child. And as we're about to head out here soon, I I understand that we are blessed to have health insurance and to, to not have to worry about the cost of what this, just the birth of this baby, how it's gonna impact us because my wife and I both have jobs. We, we have insurance, but there are those who don't. There are those who can't afford insurance because of the system we have and because of the jobs they can get. Some people work three jobs and would never be able to afford the hospital bills, even if they had insurance. I'm also aware that we are blessed. That we are blessed to have the support of a church community and a school community where Rudy works, and we're blessed to be around family. And but there are those who don't. There are those who don't have those blessings. And I'm also aware that. Statistically, statistically, my wife is at a higher chance of dying from this birth. 
not because of her age, but because our hospitals do not care for people with non-white skin as well as they do those who have white skin. And those are just a few of them. I'm aware that there are people whose weddings will never be accepted by society because of who they decide to marry. I'm aware that my wife, who's African American, that even just 20, 30 years ago, we would not have been allowed to get married in a lot of the United States. And I think that's what maybe the next step for us as a church is, is that we have, in Peter's story, we have this, this written code, this written law of division that God says to overcome. But now as people of God, we're being shown that there are unwritten or that there are ancient laws that need to be overcome. That there are ancient divisions that, that God will call us to break down, to bust through, and to reach out. So what are those divisions around us? What are those divisions around our church? Economic status might be one of those. Physical ability might be one of those divisions that, that are created because we don't reach out to serve their needs and to know how we can best serve them. Peter had to make adjustments. Peter in the next chapter has to go back and explain to the larger church, the church in Jerusalem, why he did what he did. Why did he go and spend time with the Gentiles? Just like Jesus had to go and explain to the Pharisees why he was eating with outcasts and sinners and Gentiles. They had to go explain why they were sent past these laws of division, why they broke them, why they went outside of them, and why they made the connections that historically they weren't supposed to. I think that's where we are today. Where we are today as, as followers of Christ is we are challenged to take a step back and look at the divisions that are not overtly stated anymore, but are still lived out. What are the divisions that our personal interest creates? When we want what we want, who do we neglect and divide ourselves from because of it? And how do we break those divisions? What divisions are, are God calling us to go beyond, to break through? Who are we called to go out and listen to? To not call profane, but to see that God has made all of us clean through Jesus Christ. And that just like Jesus, we are called to go out. Just like Peter, we are called to go out and go past those laws of division. Some of them are actual laws or statutes or regulations that were put a long time ago and that we have to work to overcome. And some of those are laws of division that, that we have within ourselves and that our community our country has that, that, that there are voices trying to tell us what those divisions are. And if we listen, we'll hear them and we'll start to see them. So as, as we go into this time where we're going to start meeting together, as we go into this time of Still taking one step, looking one day ahead, trying to figure out what tomorrow will bring in the midst of a pandemic and in the midst of change. 
Let us not forget to look outside those laws, those codes, those beliefs that divide us. Let us not neglect the voice of God that is telling us to not call unclean what God has made clean. To not look down upon those that God has poured God's love over. And let us pray, not only for those in our church, but for those in our community, and for us as a church to have our eyes open and our ears to hear, to be willing to step outside of those bounds, to be willing to reach out. Kind of like Mother Teresa did to the untouchables. May we go out like Jesus, like Peter, like Mother Teresa, like others in our lives. May we find and see those laws of division and may we follow God past them. And may all God's children say together, Amen. Having heard God's word, let us proclaim together what we have proclaimed with all those who follow Jesus from Jesus' time, as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And in this time of the service where we would normally collect offering, you are invited to send or to drop by your monetary offerings to the church. But also in this time, you're invited encouraged to listen to God, but also to offer yourselves up to God, offer your very life to the Lord. As someone who follows in Jesus' footsteps, as a child of God, who desires to be who God created you to be, and to share God's love and guidance with others. So let us offer our very selves up to God, and even our voices, in this time as we sing together, Blessed be the tide that binds. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear from sorrow toil and pain and sin we shall be free and perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. And now let us come before God as we pray for ourselves, for our family, our friends, our community, and the world. As God promises to hear us, let us lift up our prayers now. Heavenly Lord, you are a God who leads us, who makes us a way when there is no way, 
We give you thanks, O Lord, for you are stronger than every situation. We give you thanks for your creative spirit is always at work, making all things new. We give you thanks for through for though we feel scattered or on edge, there is no place we can go beyond the reach of your love. And so we are bold to lift our voices to you to admit our need. We pray this day for your church in this community, in this nation, and in this world. We ask your blessings on your body that we may in turn be a blessing to others. We ask for guidance, strong and sure, for we are not certain of the way forward. We pray for the gift of discernment and the courage to follow, even when we feel battered by the waves. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, and feet ready to follow, and hands ready to serve. Take us, take from us any thought that does not glorify you, and lead us on your way. We pray this day for the nation, for the nations of this world, and for our leaders, that they too may have the gifts of discernment and courage. Give them wisdom to seek the good of all, not only some. Give them compassion and imagination and love. We pray this day for your people near and far who live each day with fear. Whether they fear someone in their home or violence in the streets or the government or themselves, bring peace, O God. Bring peace to those in the midst of war and to those whose greatest challenge is within. Bring peace that passes all understanding, peace founded on justice, and bring us together to be creators of justice and peace for all your creation. We pray this day for those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. May your healing presence surround and fill them. May your comfort enfold them. Guide the hands and minds of doctors and nurses and all who care for others, that they may understand and so treat people toward wholeness. We pray this day for all those who find the news too much to bear, people living with stories that have not been able to tell, with hearts burdened by trauma, with lives upended by choices made by others. Shield their hearts, O God. Give them hope and help and a listening ear. Give us courage to hold their stories, their feelings, and their prayers, to be a friend to those who feel. You are God. You are a God who makes a way when there is no way, who creates paths in the desert through the storm. You carry our burdens and lift our spirits that we may bravely walk this earthly way. Lead and guide us to go forward into your future with faith, hope, and love. We pray these and all things that are in our hearts and our minds in the name of the one who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ. So Lord, we entrust all these concerns to you, God. Lord, we commend to your care our souls and our bodies, our minds and our thoughts, our health and our work, our parents, our children, our families, our neighbors and friends, our life and our death. We place them all in your hands this day and always. And so Lord, we pray as your son modeled for us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we conclude our time together, as we as this time comes to an end, and as we prepare ourselves to experience and to follow God beyond the divisions of our world outside of this worship time. Let us sing together Song of Hope. May the God of hope go with us every day filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that 
that's new, faithful when we hear Christ call. May the God of love go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice beat us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call. May we go out and follow God past the laws of division in our lives and in our society and reach out to those whom God has made clean and called beloved. And let us commit our lives to our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ in my beginning, Christ there at my end, Christ be in my journey, Christ everlasting friend, Christ be in my waking, Christ at my repose, Christ in every action. Christ when eyelids close. And may the love of God that has no division, that has no boundaries, but the love of God that fills every one of us to overflowing, may that love of God be with us. And may that love of God be what guides us out into the world to be lived out and shared with everyone. And may all God's children say together, Amen.